Okay, these problems are going to ask you to take dividends that we're going to be distributing to our shareholders and decide who gets them. So in this example, we're going to have two classes of stock. We're going to have common stockholders and preferred stockholders. And the preferred stockholders are preferred because they get preferential treatment to dividends. So if we pay out dividends, they are going to receive their dividends first. Any remaining will go to the common stockholders. So let me show you how this works. The first thing that we have to do is we have to learn how do you calculate dividends for preferred stockholders. All right, and here's how you do it. Okay, so you have to be given the numbers to do this, and this is what you're going to be given. You're going to be told a percentage, a percentage, percentage, and you're going to be given a par value, and you're going to be told number of shares, or at least given a way to calculate number of shares. All right, so let's look and see where this information is. So whenever I see a long paragraph like this, I generally like to take out the important information and put it in shorter amounts of information. So what I'm saying is this. Um, it says that I have 12,000 shares of cumulative preferred 2% stock um, that is $150 par, and then it stops there because the rest of it is going to be talking about your common stock. So I would do this, preferred stock. It says that it has 12,000 shares, and it is 2%, and it is $150 par. So that's your information about preferred stock. Since we're here, let's go ahead and write down the information about the common stock. We're not going to need quite as much information, but let's just go ahead and do it. Common stock tells us that we have 50,000 shares, and it's $10 par. Notice it doesn't give a percent. Here's why. If you have preferred stock, that means you get preferential treatment and you get a certain amount of dividends promised to you if the company pays dividends. So that 2% is promising them 2% times par times number of shares. That's the promise of the dividends. We don't promise common stockholders anything, so there's not a percentage attached to common stock. They just get whatever is left over. All right, so the question was how to calculate dividends for, for preferred stockholders. Well, the answer is percent times par times number of shares. So let's do it. All right, the percent is 2%, right? And the par value is 150. And the number of shares that we're going to be paying on is 12,000. So in your calculator, you will simply say 2% times 150 times 12,000, and $36,000 is the amount of dividends that you are going to promise to pay them every time you pay dividends. Now, you don't necessarily have to pay dividends, but if you pay them, then these preferred stockholders will get this number. Okay, so let's see how we're going to use this information. Okay, it's asking us to calculate the dividends per share on each class of stock for each of the four years. So, the years are year one, year two, year three, and year four. And then if you look through this information, it's going to tell us how much dividends we paid. The first year, it says that we paid 27000 The second year, it says that we paid 60000 the third year, it says that we paid 80000 and the fourth year, 90000 Okay, so what we need to do is, remember, we're trying to calculate the dividends per share on each class of stock. Well, this is the total dividend, so the question is, who got them? All right, so let's look at year one, and we're going to start off with preferred, because they get the preferential treatment. And in year one, we calculated that each year we owe them 36000 So the question is, can we give them all 36000 Well, we only distributed 27000 so we can't give them any more than 27000 So they're going to get all 27000 and we're going to owe them some remaining. Common stockholders didn't have any because there was none left over. And then we've got dividends and arrears, which means that amounts that we owe to the preferred stockholders when we end up um, having
having more to pay. So we originally owed them 36000 We paid them 27000 So we still owe them 9000 more. And we'll give that to them when we have it to give out. Let's look at year two to keep going and show this example. All right, so for year two, we owe them 36000 because we pay that to them every single year, if possible. And then we owe them 9000 from dividends and arrears. That's from the previous period that we didn't pay them yet. So we have plenty. Let's give it all to them. So we owe them 36000 for the current year plus 9000 from dividends and arrears. All right, so that means that we have paid them everything, so we don't have any dividends and arrears this year. Now, do we have any left over for the common stockholders? Yes, we do. So we gave out um, a total of 60000 and the preferred stockholders got 45000 so the rest of that gets to go to the common stockholders, and that takes care of year two. All right, let's look at year three. Luckily, we have enough again. So we're going to just owe them their 36000 we don't have any dividends and arrears to worry about, so the common stockholders are going to get um, the 80000 minus the 36000 and so the common stockholders get 44000 Year 4, we also have enough, so we're going to give them their 36000 that we promise them every year. And we have even more left over this time for our common stockholders, so it's 90000 minus 36000 gives us what we can give to the common stockholders, so we don't have any more dividends and arrears. Now let's talk about... It says calculate the dividends per share on each class of stock. So I told you how much dividends we're going to get, but the book is going to sometimes ask us for the amount per share. Per share just means how much for each one share of stock. So the word per means divide, so that's how we're going to get to this answer. Okay, look at year one. For preferred dividends, we're going to give them 27000 If I want to know how much that is per share, I've got 12,000 shares of stock, right? So what I will say is I will say $27,000 for preferred stock divided by 12000 and that tells me that it's $2.25 per share. I'm going to do the same thing for common stock. This time they got zero, and so zero divided by the 50,000 shares that I have of common stockholders is zero. Year two for preferred stockholders, I have $45,000, so I'm going to say $45,000 divided by the total number of shares, which is 12,000, tells me that I paid $3.75 per share. This time I do have common stock, so I've got 15,000 of dividends divided by the 50,000 shares, and it's 30 cents. All right, for year three, for preferred stockholders, I've got 36,000 divided by 12,000. And then for my common stockholders, I have 44000 divided by 50000 All right, that's $0.88. Cents. And then for year four, I have ninety or 36000 divided by 12000 And then I've got 54000 divided by 50000 All right, so... That is telling us that per share of stock in year one, the preferred stockholders got $2.25, and per share they got zero for common stock. Let's skip over to year four. That's telling us that we have $3 of dividends per share for preferred stock and $1.08 for common stock. So this is how you do cumulative preferred stock. Cumulative means that if we didn't pay them in the previous year, we get this dividends in arrears. You can have non-cumulative preferred stock, in which case, if you didn't pay them, you just pass the dividend, and you wouldn't give them um, it from previous years past. But if it doesn't tell you otherwise, you always assume that it is cumulative preferred stock. Let me know if you have any questions.